Hello and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Colby. With me as always is Steve. And we are joined for a second time by our special guest. He wowed us in season five of The Last Kingdom and he took it up another notch with an excellent performance as King Ethelstan in the new Netflix film, Seven Kings Must Die, which by the way, as of this moment of this recording, I think is the number one stream movie on the planet. It is. It is. April 16th. Yes. Come on, guys. Harry Gilby, Harry Gilby, welcome to the Screen Chronicles. Welcome Hello. back. How great are you doing? Back again. I'm great. I'm great. Love you guys. It's brilliant. I love doing this podcast. Well, we love you. Oh, thanks, man. And <clears throat> we did. Story. Well, we did. We did, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> just kidding. But, but you know, honestly, we, we were watching this, and we're not just saying this to you because we have you on. But we were talking and we were like, man, Harry just killed that scene. Um, we, we just kept saying that like every time Ethel oh, Stan and Uhtred uh, interact yeah. together. We're like, oh, my yeah. God, you right. just killed that. Yeah. Thank um, you. I really appreciate that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you, you did well in five. Obviously, you were good, but I, I don't know if, if they just. Much. <laughs> but, well, I don't know if they just character... gave you. Yeah, so much more complex. So much more yeah. complex this season. Um, yeah, you, yeah a, you just had you brought a lot of like nuance to the scenes because I think that. And spoiler alert for people: if you haven't seen the movie Seven Kings Must Die or the show The Last Kingdom, you need to get on that. I think in the past we have had um, Alfred, Edward, when they're interacting with Uhtred and they're being kingly. It seems yeah. like they're just like they're just cold wall to Uhtred and and their yeah. and their experiences together. Um, but I felt like even when you were going against him, you could you could always like see in Ethelstan that he's like, well, this guy like raised me, and yeah, yeah, I was part of his bro squad. You know, like like you could yeah. always tell that that was in it. So I don't mean, yeah, I don't know yeah. how you did it, but. Like it was I something feel, that I could feel. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I wanted to, I wanted there to be that conflict between kind of, you know, he's, he wasn't sure who to go for, whether to be on Uhtred's side or Inglemund's side. And I kind of like the idea of just, you know, if someone said to me today, but Harry, like you're king of England, you'd shit yourself. Like you'd be <laughs> so scared. And like, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm young and like, it would be a terrifying thing. So I kind of wanted to ha have, you know, Inglemunder, sort of have all that power and i'm just you know he just fully manipulates me into being this kind of person that truly i'm i'm not but i think it's the right thing to do because you know he's an elder and he knows what he's doing and i don't so i'm like yeah well he of course he knows like, yeah so i kind of wanted to do that um and i hope that showed um i totally. think it did it absolutely did that's kind of what would happen i think if you were if you had an advisor you know at that time especially who was older who who is a lot more kind of confident you could you could say maybe and sort of yeah. more powerful and I, yeah i just really liked that idea that i was completely under his wing and I didn't have a clue what i was doing and i think i hadn't read the book so i didn't know yeah. this but the fact that he was in love with him really yeah. sold that whole uh scheme the whole the whole theme of him being controlled yeah. because at first i'm like how is ethelstan you know who was raised by Uhtred letting this guy kind of manipulate him but but love will do that. Love will make people do irrational things. Is, is, I know is, is exactly. Whipped. Yeah, it really that actually really helped with the with the storyline. I think. I think just and especially with my arc, I thought you know having that. I mean, love takes over everything in in the story. Really, you know. It, it, okay, it's about uniting England, but I think for me, it was just about having this guy sort of think that I'm great and fall in love with me. Um, and I thought that's kind of that's almost more interesting than uniting uniting england it's that yeah. love story that everyone kind of you know everyone loves a, a romance so so yeah romance and betrayal and romance and betrayal um, and revenge and even up even up to the end though like you see when you do him in yeah um, yeah yeah it's not easy for for ethelstan it's oh, that, that, was a that, that love doesn't just go too, away man. that love doesn't That's, just go away right it's, yeah it's i mean that scene that scene on that day i remember because we it started snowing um and they we were doing we were in the middle of doing the battle and they were like right guys we're gonna have to stop doing the battle because the continuity doesn't work with the snow now ah. so what could we do and then they ed just came up to us the director and the producers and they were like guys we're gonna have to do your death scene and we were like they were like can you 
maybe do it in 20 minutes time and we were like <laughs> what what we we're like yeah but i actually i that was that was the most i think relaxed i felt throughout the throughout the whole filming with the scene because you're not expect you weren't i wasn't expecting it so you know when it came i was like great i mean i kind of you can kind of just give it a go and see kind of what happens and you're not like, it, like it's, instead it's, of overthinking it or something of like you or... know the night before going oh my god how am i gonna play right. this how gonna do that and it, you just so we had 20 minutes and we're like right let's go and we just went me and laurie just went through the lines and kind of got it done quite quite quickly while we had this small little bracket of when it was snowing and then we kind of carried on with the battle afterwards but that it looked i remember seeing it on the monitor that day and i thought it looked so beautiful with the snow and like you know i i had like a it was really cold and i had like a snotty nose i don't know whether it was on in the actual thing but i saw a shot of me and it it was like this snot was just like coming down here all right everybody go right now and look zoom in (laughs) i was like yeah i was like i hope that's not in the film but it doesn't matter anyway it would have added mickey Mickey stolt had that snot in season five like his torture scene oh remember that yeah and like i'm not being tortured in this scene oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah you are with love man I'm with love, you with love. yeah, exactly, yeah. But you also, <laughs> you also have that tear coming down. Can you cry on command, or was that like? It was part of me that was like, shall I just watch him die and be so blank and kind of like, you know, fuck you, you've you've ruined my you've ruined mm-hmm. my life or whatever, and just sort of have no effect on me. But I, I I really wanted to be affected by it, even if it's just for a second, like it is in the film. I'm glad that they kept that bit in because it's just like. You know, you would. I mean, here's someone you love. No matter if he betrayed you, you still loved him at a time. And like to see right. someone get stabbed in the back of the neck, like it's not pleasant. And I, I don't know if this would been would have been Ethelstan's first love. I mean, we all know how like the yeah. first time you fall in love with someone is is a very strong one. But yeah, you know. but yeah, I kind of yeah, I, I really liked uh, that they kept that in because like I, you know, I I think I was actually upset, sort of you know, watching it because I was like. You know, Laurie's like I, he's one of my best friends, and it was almost you know weird to see to see that happen. It was like he's dying. He's like, alive though, right? He's still alive. The, the actor, he, like, he's, you guys... still alive. he's still alive. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, <laughs> but everyone wanted to know. Well, what was it like working with him? Because he was, in our opinion, out of all the new characters that came into this film, he was the most captivating. And obviously, you guys share yeah. the most screen time together. Um, what yeah. was it like working with Laurie? Brilliant. I mean, it made my experience on this film because a lot of, you know, a lot of my closer friends from the show, like, you know, weren't in the film. Um, right. You know, obviously a lot of them were, but like there were a lot that weren't, that didn't carry over to the film either way, either because they were, they died Harry, in it. Or Harry died and yeah. And like, yeah, yeah you know, and um, so it was really nice having, uh, you know, having Laurie there and we really, we really clicked. We got on. We were all in that same abil- same apartment building again, like season five. Right. Uh, and we just really got on. And he he's a br- he's such a brilliant actor. And I was kind of a little bit threatened because yeah. I knew he was really good. I kind of, I knew who he was actually before we started filming. Um, I asked for his number because I wanted to just check in before and kind of, you know, touch cool. base. Cool. And, see what's happening but he you know he's done a lot of cool stuff he's played Shakespeare and like he yeah he it was really easy just doing that with him and it it, awesome. it felt all really sort of chill and yeah very comfortable so yeah I I, I love uh, when you deliver the line in that scene it's like well why are you the one that's gonna die or yeah whatever why am I alive why are you it, yeah why am I die? living and you about to die yeah, yeah. yes oh, great man. line yeah, it was a good line. I enjoyed saying that. Delivered very well. Very well. <laughs> it was one of those ones like when we were because we watched it together. We hadn't watched the um a Last Kingdom thing together since we were roommates, yeah. um, season three, and then we moved out and everything. Yeah. Um, so we sh- we zoomed it together, and that was one moment where we were just like, Oh, like oh, uh, when you said yeah. that, was like, oh shit. Yeah, it's good. It was yeah. yeah, it was really it was also it was because it was freezing on that day. You know, it's quite, it's easier to get a little tear out because your eyes go a bit dry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a bit of wind to it and, they, you know, a little single tear comes out. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. What was your favorite scene then, guys? I want to know what your favorite scene was. Oh, we talked about this yesterday. And I said on the podcast, even though it wasn't what I wanted for Uhtred, mm. the final scene with you guys sort of, you reconcile with him at the end and then he yeah. goes into... Valhalla was so freaking well done. Yeah, um, yeah. The way that he's kind of left in the balance there. And and 
I've actually watched it for a third time last night. My dad's and, watched it three times now. <laughs> yeah, well, I had to watch it with you, Harry, and then I had to watch it yeah, with Steve, yeah, yeah. and then I had to watch it with my fiance, and so <laughs> you know, in that order. No, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the third time I watched it, <laughs> the third time I watched it though, like when they zoom out of that room with him standing there, yeah, like Valhalla kind of disappears again. Yeah. And um, he started left standing in the balance. And the first time I watched the movie, I was like, oh, Uhtred's dead. Mm. Uh, that's it. Um, yeah. He's dead. And I'm not super happy about it. But now I kind of look at it as like, well, maybe he's not. Maybe, maybe like he not. just saw. Maybe there is, be is going to be a spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the way I look at it. But that scene, it, it just after I left the theater that night, it stuck with yeah. me. And it's what I think about with the movie. It's. Yeah. As far as the movie goes, my favorite scene with you was yeah. when Uhtred and you, Uhtred comes to confess to you, but he confesses that Ingelmunder is the spy. That's my, that's my favorite scene. Yeah. That, was, that was one scene Steve and I looked at each other and like, man, Alex and Harry just killed this scene. <laughs> that's denial. my favorite. I think, I think because, partly because it it just sort of, there's there's those beats in it that just, it just lets it kind of do its thing. And it's... um. I, I think it gets really tense and you know at the beginning when we aren't talking that much and there's a lot of just like looks and you know what's going to happen i spoke to my mate on the phone and he was like i thought he was going to kill you and i was like same right. <laughs> i was like same i thought he was when i saw it in new york i was like what's going to happen here <laughs> which i thought the same thing when you held the sword to utrid's throw i thought maybe maybe he could yeah to me honestly you know this this might be basic but i love the battle I mean, yeah, it's a great uh, battle. It's it is. It's I'd say they don't go as crazy with the set pieces like they have yeah. the last two seasons with over the cliffs and in the yeah. trenches and things. Yeah. They just kept it. They went back to a simple. Yeah, the, the the brick and mortar from season one of just shield yeah, wall yeah, yeah. mud and yeah. yourself. Throwing yeah, they, up. They, yeah. They, they they brought in like <laughs> yeah. Bernard Cornwell's writing of of. Like they show the guys throwing up, pissing themselves, yeah. getting scared. I, 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 man, I love that. And then when it's a great battle, it's really you I call like, Shield Wall. Um, I love. No, I did, I did. And then, but then the thing is, I because I heard, I was like, oh yeah, that's a good Shield Wall. I was like, I, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, whatever. And then Alex has like a proper like Shield Wall, and I was yeah, like, he's like, oh, he's like, hold my shield. <laughs> shield. <laughs> <laughs> that man he i mean he's done a couple shield wall calls though right he has he's done a few no. i haven't that was good yeah it was good practice you were just further further away from the the microphone that's all that's i was just further away it. exactly that's yeah. all it is yeah. do, do you guys talk about that on set do you guys talk about like oh man that was a good shield wall call or like you've got to bring it for I, this or i actually had a yeah it's funny you say that i i um when we were doing those and we were doing loads like i think i must have said that must have said shield wall like a million times that day it was oh, like, nice. there was a lot and like there, as it went on my voice started to like break and i was like shield wall! <laughs> and it just wasn't quite good. everyone it, everyone stopped and started laughing it was brilliant but um yeah i mean there is like a who can do the best shield wall kind of call you know yeah. that definitely is there a consensus up. on set of like who does the best that you guys talk about or or who like owns um, it or no? I, I mean, it's probably Alex, isn't it? Yeah, probably, it's got to be, right? I'm pretty sure Mark and Arnis and Cav as well could do pretty good, pretty good shield walls. Mm -hmm. It was actually, it was really interesting. You just made me think about the about that battle because, because as you know, as you were saying, it was so like tight and sort of close contact kind of fighting. We we all sort of thought about um, how, because, you know, you, you can't put your sword out because you're going to actually hurt someone. So like, how do we kind of get around this close contact fighting and like make it look like realistic? And we all started like stabbing down at the back of the shields rather than like out. And it, I think that's what we all started doing. And it, you can tell, I think, I don't know, it just, it 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 really helped me. I just, I mean, you just made me think about it, but it really helped me kind of, you know, make it look real. Um, yeah, and there's yeah. that one scene too, where it zooms out overhead um, they do the one before like you guys come together, and that yeah, was epic, yeah. just yeah. to set the tone. But then there's oh, another that, one. That the one you mean where they all where because the, I remember there was one scene, one little shot of all the shields like like clapping. Well, that was amazing. That, yeah, that was fantastic when they when they did that, and I was like, 
they were just missing the camera every time. And I was like, that's yeah. a really cool shot. I remember Luke, like Brave I, cameraman. EOP, yeah, he did a terrific job because like, you know, I, I, I saw it on the monitor that day and I was like, wow, that's that's insane. But those are the moments that like when you're watching it on screen, it bring like you feel like you're there, you know, the, yeah. the fact that the cameramen get into those situations, it does tremendous service to the film and to the show, because yeah. I know they've done those things before. But yeah. um, when you're talking about with the sword sort of overhead, there's a shot that zooms out at one point in the battle when you guys are already clashing. Yeah. And it, it looks cool because the swords are like flying and you just see yeah. all along people are just whacking with their swords. It, um, yeah. I was going to town on it at one point. I was just like, I don't know if I think they used it, but I was literally like this, had this dagger. I wanted to use a dagger rather than a sword because I thought the sword was too big and it'd get in the way and I wouldn't, it, the movements wouldn't look as effective. I think that's what they did too. Yeah. Yeah. At so least I in just, the like, books, I, I think yeah, he uses wasp thing instead of serpent breath when he's in the shield wall. In the uh, shield Uhtred wall. Does. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. Right. There we go. Yeah. That's just, just, <laughs> just by luck. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no it was it was it was good for, it was actually really tiring i felt really unfit doing that battle like compared to season five i think it was that i wasn't you know i was wearing a lot more armor for this right. battle and it was heavier and the, with the chain mail and stuff like the season five summer kind of i call it the summer costume the one that at the end of the season where i was wearing like shorts and things they <laughs> that was so so like loose and like you know it was. Uh, it, it really kind of feels real when you're doing it. When they show the shots, like when they they zoom out from the two shield walls and they pan down, and and there's another time yeah. they just pan out from the whole battle. To me, mm. it didn't look like it was like any CG guys. Was it? Was that like all those guys, or or did do you? I know? think if, I think it's a little bit of CG. Yeah. yeah. But, well, I, mean, I think I there tell. were. You can't tell. I think some, yeah, I know. Actually, you can't. Yeah. Sometimes there were. I'm trying to remember. There must have been about 100 odd people, I think. I don't, yeah. I don't think more, any more than that. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. But it, people were kind of like swapping around, you know, and that kind of, you know, sort of would start fighting and then would change and, yeah, to a different side, kind of that kind of thing. Gotcha. How long did that battle take to shoot? I want to say it was only a week. Okay. But it might have been it might have been two weeks actually because it was a seven week shoot it was a really quick shoot and um I think it was about two weeks of the seven weeks was that that battle yeah we were in the, it was a really nice like field where we were it was in the middle of nowhere so there was like no service and everyone was on walkie oh, talkies I love it. I think it's I think it's definitely up there with the top top battles of the of I think the so whole I think it, yeah. it is one of the most real feeling battles like we already said yeah um, and. Again, we were on the edge of our seat watching it. We we yeah. were into it. Then they find you, and they form the flying V. I don't know if you ever seen the Mighty Duck movies. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. The, they um, do, don't they? I remember the sitting swine wedge. They call like, it, but yeah, I remember so cool. in New York, you were like, oh, you were like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we started doing that, I was like, it's brilliant. I just really enjoyed watching it with you because I was like, no one's oh, going to enjoy man. it as much, you know. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, I appreciate it was, that, man. It was it was a tremendous night. Um, what was yeah. it like watching it with like? Because I know that's not a usual experience for you guys to watch it with other fans. Yeah, yeah, it was a different experience to the cast and crew screening, definitely. Because you know it's all with fans, and it was very interactive, which was brilliant. I've never done. I've never been in a screening of a film that's been so kind of interactive. People were like shouting at the screen and like yeah. hearing <laughs> and clapping, like it was the theater. It was it was terrific. It was great. Yeah, that was cool, I really, dude. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, cool. But that wedge, though, back to the battle, man. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's cool when they can add elements that we haven't seen before, mm. and it's not like we talked. It's not over the top. Like they don't have to yeah. get a huge set. Um, they yeah. do that, and they do it with the horses with the logs. Um, that was tied cool. together. Yeah, that was a cool. I didn't even. I didn't see any of that. So I, when I saw it in the film, I was like, "Oh my god, there were horses and yeah. things like that." There. <laughs> what did you see? The wedge, though. Like, were you there for that or no? Because I know they were going after you, but obviously they may not have had you there. No, I think. Yeah. I think it was very much like we'd all kind of be sitting around, kind of just off from where the battle was happening. And some days we wouldn't even do anything because they'd, they'd, you know, they'd, they'd be like, right, we got to try and do your little segment today. And it might not happen. It might happen, but we'll see. And so we'd only really go in for our specific little segments. Eventually you square off then uh, with, with your ex in the battle here. And, yes. and what, what was that duel like? 
uh, filming that. That was great. Actually, Laurie, um, Laurie hurt his hand doing oh, it. No. it quite, yeah, it was like, I think it was because it was quite icy on the ground and it really hurt for like getting pushed over it. Like, I don't want to sound like <laughs> it really hurt, but like, it probably it was, would, man. It was, yeah. it was really icy and hard. And Laurie, when he has me on the floor pinned down and he punches me, I think he just missed my, he missed, well, missed my face, obviously, but <laughs> punched the floor and it just, I think it maybe broke something or dislocated something. Oh and my he God. Had to, yeah, I mean, we just about got everything done, but I, w- I think I was so into it and so involved that I was like, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. You gotta do it, let's carry on. And he was like, I've broken my hand. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with people around like, you so breaking like, their hands, dude? So Didn't Alex broke his hand in the, the last season, I think. There's or so something. many injuries. <laughs> <laughs> So the shot where I look at Laurie uh, across yes. the battlefield, um, I, there was an option that Ed was like, um, can you look into the camera for this? Both of us hmm. were going to, we did a version where we, rather than look, looking at each other, it was like looking into the camera. It's the first time I'd done that. Like felt yeah. like flea. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, this doesn't feel right looking into the camera. But I think they went for the other the other version. But it it came across really well. I like all the sort of slow mo yeah. music, and you know, I thought it was really well done. Yeah. And then your scream right after that, the rage. Um, we were just oh, like, let's yeah. go, let's uh, go, really yeah. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was it was really fun doing that. Doing all and that Steve, stuff. these were the moments in the theater when I was getting nudged because I was in Harry's seat yeah. to leave and Harry. <laughs> and so I went to Harry. I was like, Harry, they want you to go back. And Harry like looked and was like, uh, give me two minutes. And you like, I was like almost I stayed for the rest of the movie. Film, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know that I want to see the end. I know when the end is. I was like, I'll just run around. Yeah. yeah. That fight you guys had, um, was that yeah. hard to choreograph? Um, or did you think about the intention of like how Ethel Stan's emotion would affect his ability to fight? Because there was so much going on and so little time um, to do everything, we'd rehearsed this fight about a week before and then had like an hour or so before filming it to kind of give it another go. But it wasn't so complicated. I think there was some, they reused a few shots of yeah. the same kind of move, but on a different angle kind of thing. Because like it on the day I punched Laurie about five times. I he pins me down, and punches me, and then yes. I take him over, and then I punch him. But I don't think they put that in. <laughs> no, you you did a good sweep. Yeah, you you went. That's one good sweep, I think. Yeah, he was in yeah. mount. You go to mount. Yeah, it was it was a good. Yeah. It was, it was so I was thinking one. like Ethel Sand cannot lose this fight. Like as far as his ability, because in season five you were like he was fighting all the guy. time, man. I had a lot. I only I only fought in season five. Yeah. I mean, this that's what was really great about having the opportunity to do this film was that I felt that I could actually do a bit more acting because, mm-hmm. you know, season five, there were loads of fights and I, I really enjoyed that, but there were, weren't as much kind of dialogue heavy scenes. So doing that for the film, I like, oh, I loved it. I love I felt I felt so much more comfortable as well on the film because I think, you know, I would kind of settled and I knew everyone now and kind of felt more part of the TLK family. And I just totally. felt. It's the most relaxed I think I've felt on a on something before. Yeah, it was great. But I was actually on a I was on a drug when we were um, filming for acne. Uh, it was called Roaccutane, and I was on that, and I was still in it. Would really dry out all my lips, and my lips would start bleeding on takes, and like it kind of it was really quite heavy. So I, I was in between kind of season five and the film that I was on it. It's quite a, an intense you know thing to clear acne yeah. up. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but um, <laughs> you can. But yeah, no, it you was. Can. Yeah, that was kind of. It, it almost helped a little bit with the with the character. I know that sounds weird, but it kind of wow. really. It's a real downer. This drug, and it, you know, it, it's not. It's um. It's it's not that it wasn't it wasn't the easiest six months going through it. It really takes its toll on you, and um, you know, brings you down a bit. And actually, that helped oh, with that you work. know all the kind of you know the scenes where <laughs> where I get betrayed, and I'm like, I actually felt like kind of you know a little bit like that anyway so it was it was you know it was good i always kind of wondered about that too for like movies and in shows how they'll have like young people not have acne Mm -hmm. like my acne was bad when i was in high school i was terrible freshman year year. like i was like coded in it i'm like how are they always showing these kids like just but their smooth faces and stuff and i'm like i I guess makeup but 
No, I guess yeah. I guess you guys are suffering with these drugs, man. I know that's the thing. It was like because I, 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 it was. I think it was probably after doing season five. You know, all of the heat and the blood and the mm-hmm. sweat, and the dirt, and all of that, and the makeup. But I think it just. I just had a huge breakout after doing the season five, and I, I'd never. My skin was terrible. I was like purging with like these massive spots and things. Oh yeah. I was I like, I've got... with the, all the armor on and stuff. Like I, I played oh, football, yeah. you know, yeah, through, really. through college. So summer, I mean, like I was just coated in it wherever. Yeah. Like, pads, helmet, yeah. and well, hockey like that for, for me, hockey. Yeah. 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 I would say yet they added like zits and herpes to Harry McIntyre's face as Ethelwald. <laughs> <laughs> but they made you take yours or your acne they, away. Yeah, Jeez. no, it was, it was, I'm glad because I had like a six month window. It's, it's quite interesting talking about it because I haven't really spoken about it before, but like it, it you know, it, it it's, a lot of people my age have it. I know that most people yeah. have got Roaccutane, you know, loads of people. And I think it it was just really interesting doing something as, you know, intense as this on a, something that was quite, it was a really powerful thing to be on. And, oh, you know, it's, yeah, I've um, never even heard of it. Yeah, it just completely, it's like the last resort and just completely clears acne. And like, Damn. that's, yeah. It works well too for, for Ethelstan because, and I didn't know about his sexual orientation prior to the movie. Um, yeah. And to talking to Steve, I hadn't read the book mm. um, <laughs> that he was well-groomed and he kept himself looking really good, apparently in history from, from mm. what they know of what they know. Yeah. At least Bernard Cornwall writes about that. And I, I mean, probably lended itself well, because that you would, Ethelstan would keep him, his appearance really, really well. You yeah know. yeah i mean i know because i know in the books right did, did he have he had like gold hoops in his in his yeah. hair right yeah he had uh, like curled hair and like feathers or gold loops or something yeah he was and that's yeah. what i was like they should have him even more done up in this you know like <laughs> it was i think it was an interesting Elton john you know in the <laughs> you know yeah it was it was an interesting one because i you know there were a lot of scenes where they were kind of saying to me can you wear the crown and I, I think I I didn't want to because part of me was like a king wouldn't always wear his crown unless he was on like a, a you know a royal duty or whatever. True. And I also thought yeah, so I I didn't really want to wear it all the time. Also, I I find that it's sometimes a bit of a distraction. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking that in my head. But I I, I liked not wearing it as as often as you know. One more question on the battle here. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I, I see the movies like right under two hours. So I'm just like, yeah, did they cut things out? Were there things they they wanted to do? But uh, maybe you can tell me if this this was part of it or not. But I know from the books, there's an awesome scene. And I love the battle that we got in the movie. But there's this awesome scene. I, Ethelstan is fighting either Onloff or Ergomander. I forget who. But then oh, yeah, yeah. throws Serpent Breath to him. And he catches it, and then he kills uh, the the, the main Dane he's fighting. I, I guess yeah. was that was that ever talked about? Was that ever? I don't think it was. But oh, man, I would have loved cool. to see. That would have been great. No, I think I think sometimes you know, there's a lot of it was it. They're trying to kind of wrap a story up, and there are some bits that you know, with only two hours of a film, you you have to sacrifice some some parts of a, of the story. But I think I you know I think. I think they've done a terrific job in wrapping it up in so little time, and you know, there's a lot to get in, and then they uh, and they got it in. So yeah. it didn't feel rushed, but but I but I knew it was on Netflix and it was right under. Like when you look at the runtime, yeah. it's like right under two hours. Right under, yeah. Like, oh, okay. But I think it was it was it, the original would have been longer. Yeah. yeah, I think it was cut down. But I think as everything is, everything's originally yeah. like five hours long, and then they cut it down to be you know yeah. the time like the that people Beatles like, documentary <laughs> was like 60 hours long or something and they yeah, cut it, it to was, 18 it? and then they yeah. cut it to eight <laughs> yeah 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 exactly so but... so what has the um obviously the movie is doing very very well around the whole yeah. world i think 90 ish con- i think 89 countries yeah, this morning i'm nice. sure it's gone up it's number one on netflix what's the response been like for you from fans generally good i mean i haven't like i don't like to look too much because i'm scared that i'm going to get loads of hate (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah i mean i've had some really nice comments about my my performance and things and yeah i've been sort of yeah it's it's kind of made my it's made it all worthwhile because you know you do it a year ago and you forget about it and you're like oh yeah 
<laughs> got exactly what you did. So it's really nice to have, you know, the gratification, I guess. Yeah. And how did you feel sort of going from being a lot of people's favorite character, at least new favorite character in season five, to having to do these bad things, these things that you knew <laughs> were going to piss people <laughs> off? Like, how did you personally feel about that with, with Ethel Stanger? I feel I, it's because I kind of wanted to separate season five with the film. Like, I. Right. I, I think I am a completely different character really in season five compared to the film. Like I look pretty similar. I, you know, that's what I was going to say about my parents. They, they told me to grow my hair out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a hairy dude. I can't grow that much facial hair. Um, so I tried and then Sean, <laughs> the makeup and hair designer, she, uh, she saw it. It was like this wispy little like mustache with like a little <laughs> bit. In it. And she was like, it's got to go, Harry. And I was like, yeah, I know. It, needs to. it was terrible. I looked like, some, I, I just looked awful. And they even tried putting a mustache and a bit of a beard on to try and make me look a bit older. It didn't work. Another thing that's interesting, when we talked to you before, well, when season five came out, that was when I was you filming. were in the middle of filming um, yeah. the movie. And we were asking you yeah. questions about what we just saw in season five. And you had to sort of, now looking back at it, because I just rewatched it yesterday, answer those questions without yeah. sort of talking and what was your present like About what was film, happening yeah. at that time with you in the film um because it's just two vastly different characters like yeah it doesn't feel like a new character it feels like to me that ethel stan is the same person but yeah you know, things have happened in his life and he's more things he's going changed, yeah, but it was really nice to kind of have a fresh you know a fresh slate and kind of a clean slate and have you know start with a whole different side to him that wasn't really written in season five it was you know he was more of a boy in season five and he didn't have any responsibilities as well so like you know he could do what he wanted and was kind of the young lad who would go around killing and was just trying to you know have everyone on his side but i think with this it was so much you know much more interesting to to be that kind of you know in between phase of boy to man and you know um a young king because there aren't many kind of young king on screen like you know right it's been done a few times but it's really really difficult as soon as they put that you know sort of royal outfit on you and they put a crown on your head it's so so hard to not just go i'm a king and i would be like this and be so like kingly and it's because it, i've caught myself doing it at certain times and i'm like no like stop 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 it's easy to do because you, you know you want to seem regal and you do want to seem like you've got power which makes sense but right it's it's so hard to go straight into the stereotype of being the king and i, I try i wanted to steer away from that as much as possible and just be this young kind of young man who didn't really know what he was doing yeah and you get your own coronation scene that must have been fun to film that was cool yeah yeah it was that 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 costume was insane the co the costumes on yeah. this film i thought were were incredible i thought they were mm -hmm. so detailed they were amazing they were it was an italian um costume designer yeah he was fantastic he just really sort of put his a game out there did and, you get any input into your own costume at all or i think there were variations of different costumes so you know there was the one where i uh bring out osbert and edmund that kind of like i had like a red thing underneath i think and a kind of that was my black the, the armor that I wear that I wear in the battle. They handmade that. It was, it was amazing. It felt yeah, really it looked good. It felt really good. kind of yeah. yeah, really kind of sturdy and yeah. yeah, it it was but the 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 coronation scene, there were about ten layers I had on for that scene. And I was yeah. so yeah, it was it was hot. It was like a base layer, then it had like a, some sort of thing and then and then a yeah, a huge cloak at the end, and it was very cool doing that coronation. It's not very often you can you sit on a throne and you've got a hundred people there saying "Long live the king" and stuff, and you're Does like, your head get a little bit bigger after that day. Do you just like? Uh, like... <laughs> it is weird though. It is, it is. It's it's a very strange feeling that you go from being sort of one minute you're you're playing this king and you've got all these people like bowing down to you as this king, and then the next minute you're you're at home, you know, like like. <laughs> You're at home watching like some, you know, playing PlayStation or whatever. And you're like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> Get me back on the throne. <laughs> yeah. Bring me my wine. Bring me my like wine. Yeah. Doesn't I just yeah. start ordering people today. around? Yeah, my mates are like, mate, you've changed. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> that scene um, that you just mentioned uh, too, when you bring out um, Edmund and Osbert. Mm. Uh, when I was watching, I was like, Ethelstan, why you got to be a dick right now? Like, Hooch <laughs> are just like, where are my kids? And you're just like, 
bring them out. Bring like them. Everybody looks so sad for like 30 seconds. Like, Uch, it's yeah. like, oh my God, they're dead. I know, I know. It was like, got you guys. You see, Instead of like as soon as when Uhtred walks in, just like, Uhtred, your kids are okay. Or, your, your son's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, um, yeah. That. There's a scene that I, that I, you know, was interesting doing was the um, the one in the tent. Yeah. You know, when he comes in and he's like, I know about you and Inglemunder and I know, you know, all of this. Yeah. And interesting. I kind of wanted to, I, I think that's what ended up being in the film, but I kind of wanted to show that, you know, being gay at, at that point in time, you know, it wasn't good if you're a king. Like, you could get beheaded and, like, you know. And you got to have a kid, too. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, like, it was a dangerous thing to, to spread around. And so when he says to me, like, oh, you know, I know about what you're doing, I kind of wanted to keep that really, like, in and, you know, sort of not not so loud. I think I could have maybe have gone, like, you know, who how dare you say that like what's mm -hmm. going on and like really sort of slam my hand down and gone for it in that situation when you've got you're in a tent and you've got all these people around you and if someone hears that that's what's being that's what's happening with the king it's right. gonna get spread around and you could you know get killed and so i can't i really wanted to be like whoa this is like you, do you understand what you're saying this is like a really this is a like what you're saying is very dangerous putting me in a very dangerous situation kind of thing i don't know if that Sort of show. I think so. I, to me, in that know, scene, it it almost felt like a moment when, like, your parent knows you you've done something, and you're not yeah. in trouble for it, but you're embarrassed, yeah. and you don't want them to know. That's how it felt. How you did it there, you're just like, what? Who, yeah. Who was it? You like, whoa. Who told you, told yeah. Was it him? Was it her? Yeah. And it was just like, man, I don't care, dude. I'm super yeah. progressive, man. <laughs> like, and I love yeah. how Uhtred like does him a favor, does you a favor at the end of the movie where he's like, just make me a promise that you'll never marry and you'll give it to your brother. Sort of. I love that line. Yeah, giving that was... permission without telling everyone to yeah. understand you can be who you are. Who you, yeah. And now you have a way to get off the hook with that when people go, why aren't you having an heir? And you yeah. don't have to tell them. Um, I thought that I was loved brilliant. That line. I thought that was one of my favorite little bits in the whole film that he, it, he was just, that he would do that. Yeah. It was a really nice little moment that bro moment. Yeah. Bro. It's really interesting actually talking about, cause you don't, you don't really get to explain your kind of process and your arc of what you wanted to try and do. So it's great. Right. Coming, like talking about all of this, you know? Yeah. We'd love to hear it, man. Yeah. We I love mean, to hear it. And it seems like it, everything you're saying came across in the film. I mean, again, it couldn't have been easy to play that nuanced performance where you're in love with someone. Yeah. Romantically, but you also are in, you're going against somebody else who you love deeply as like a yeah. father, as a paternal figure. Yeah. In Uhtred. Um, and that's such a complex of emotions that you had to portray. And I, I think you did it well. Like when you hold the sword up and you have to banish him, Mm. see how much it pains Ethelstan. you just yeah it's a hard right. thing for him to do but he yeah. feels he has to do it you know yeah exactly i i yeah i mean as well and i i really i don't know about what about you guys if you could tell but it was i love to kind of see it in a film aspect rather you know rather than it being a tv version it was you know anamorphic lenses and it was very wide and the, the scales yeah. bigger and i really like seeing that Oh, when they yeah, when they pan out, when you have the sword to his his throat. Yeah, it's such a that cool was, shot. That. that was an awesome shot in front of Bevan yeah. there too. It was the light was amazing that day, and we all, we all sort of we all thought this is going to look amazing because it was on the yeah. edge of that kind of hill, and oh, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's you always I always forget that when I'm watching them, like that on screen, it's the sea right behind us, but like it's yeah. it's not the sea in real life. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it looked great. Like, it looked great. I the... down to the unit base. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it oh, looked yeah. great, and the music that they added that moment. Oh, it was amazing. It yeah. really gets you going. It, it like, yeah. is he gonna do this right now? Um, I know. I know. I got a bit weird. starstruck. I met. I met Ivor the other oh, night. Yeah. Yeah. She was at the cast and crew screening, and I was like, oh my god, the music. I think the, the music's one of the best things of oh, the film. Like, it's so iconic. iconic to the whole show. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was just, it had like, even, especially in the battle at the end, it kind of had like an avatar kind of feel to it. It was yeah. brilliant. They're doing a vinyl pressing of it, and I think they're going to do a CD as well. And like a That's sort fantastic. of, uh, it's really cool. Exactly. I like, look for it. It's got loads of like, kind of 
notes in it as well and what they tried to do with it and you oh, know, fantastic it's really, yeah I mean, really i've cool. listened to those the soundtrack even when i'm not watching the last kingdom sometimes just it's yeah, so yeah good like oh yeah sometimes when i'm yeah. editing these i'll just put on i'll just put whack on it on like yeah that. yeah you did have you know you, you you're talking about how you're worried how the fans were going to react and everything mm. and there was a ton of things ethelstan did to try and just attack the last kingdom fan base um, yeah. <laughs> so he, killing he, everyone. Yeah. Brother Elf, 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 Elf Weird yeah. kills yeah. him. He hangs yeah. out home. He banishes Uhtred. Uh, when, when you're reading the script, which which one of these were you just like, oh man, guys, like, why are you doing the this? Elf <laughs> the Elf Helm one was the one. Yeah. That was the one I was like, oh. I said to I said to James, I was like, they're gonna hate me for doing this. Like they're gonna hate me. That was actually really sad doing that scene because you know he's but he's been on this for years and Season it's different. For me. I kind of yeah, you know, I've I've only been doing it for the last couple of years, but you know, Mark and Arnis and James and Alex and you know, yeah. Cat and things they've been doing this for nearly just like you know seven years or something. So you know, it was really sad to have to say. I gotta kill you, James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, but I, I thought the music was lovely in that scene as well. And James's performance was brilliant. Oh, my God. Was so good. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you know, yeah. Right after you walk away there, um, yeah. You killed it. And it, it was a great scene, sad scene, yeah. but I really wanted to show that I was, that I didn't want to have to do this. Um, you know, and and I'm right. kind of sorry. And there was so many rash decisions, you know, like that Ethelstan made and, you know, like <laughs> killing Alhelm, who's like his most trusted well, kind of. It's, and it's, I definitely it's, got that, like, from from your performance that you did not want to do that. And I, I don't know, no. like, part of it, like, did Ethelstan think in that moment that Uhtred had told Aldhelm about his sexual orientation? Um, I think... I think a lot of it's it's Ingelmunder. I don't think right. Ethelstan really wanted to do any of it. I well, think right, he's right. doing it because he thinks that's what's you know that's what's involved, and you know he's obviously seen what his dad had done and all of that, and you kind of like, oh well, that's how I should be. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just listen to, and obviously you know you've got Uhtred, who's like his father figure, go it's coming in and saying like you should be doing this, you should be doing that, and you're like go away, dad, like, leave me alone. I'm a man now. It's like that kind of thing. I think yeah. that was important. And I love the moment when you go to um, fight you and Oryx. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where you're all tough outside and you're like very authoritative talking to him. And then Uhtred's yeah. voice comes out. And all of a sudden the boy in Ethelstan, I feel like reappears out, for yeah. a second. He's like, Uhtred. Like, yeah, that was a cool yeah. moment too. Subtle, yeah. but cool. Yeah, yeah it was... Um, it was interesting that scene because originally I get off the horse and obviously, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in the film. So everything gets trimmed down, but on the day it was a long, like you could, you couldn't hear anything. Like he walks, you and walks out, he drops his swords and I stare at him for like quite a while and like kind of suss him out. And then I slowly got off the horse, kind of slowly walked over to him, gave him a big hug first. That's what I did. I didn't go in straight for the stab. Uh... I give him a big oh, hug and I'm kind of like almost like a thank you for for doing this and then I pull back and then stab him it but obviously you know there's they, they had to cut bits as they as, as, what, as I, I was so I was so surprised that because I thought he was yeah I mean we all know Ethel Stan was going to become king um, yeah but i thought he was gonna hug him there and then like, difficult. <laughs> may, maybe make him submit you know or something yeah and, and then yeah. Be, and so i was like what like that was yeah. the first time in the movie too that was like the first sort of shock of the movie i think was that yeah, yeah it was yeah it kind of got yeah. it rolling yeah ewan did a great job as well i mean uh, he was only he was only out there with us for about a week but he came in and just smashed it and then was like bye guys <laughs> He was great. Um, yeah, he was great. Yeah. And before that moment, how did you view Ethelstan and Elfward's relationship? Because you guys have that awesome moment at the end of season five yeah, yeah. with um with uh, Adrian Schiller. That's sort of a had to be somewhat of a bonding moment between them where Elfward sort of is like, Oh, well, Ethelstan's right here. And they are brothers. It's a shame we didn't really get to do more stuff together, me and Ewan, because that that kind of relationship never really was kind of no one they didn't really go into it that much no, so no. obviously it's his younger brother and he 
obviously and there's there's a scene where he's kind of checks up on him in season five and he's like mm-hmm. you know obviously knows that his mum's just come in dead on a carriage or whatever and he's trying to protect him from that so I, he obviously cares about him but i think in that position again it's nothing to do with me it's all just Ingelmunder going this is what you need to do this is what you need to do and obviously all behind the scenes kind of yeah. thing and to be fair he was going to challenge your right to the throne yeah yeah um, yeah like they talk about that leading up to it, about how he's raising people to take you on so yeah you know it, it i think it's somewhat yeah. justified but he did yeah. surrender you know it's like and i think also at that time i don't think they they wouldn't have been as close as as no. you know that would have been you know the, the the end goal is being king and if anything's going to get in their way they're not going to well it's pretty smart because how many times in these movies are we like just kill that person so they don't come <laughs> back and haunt you later <laughs> which like they should have done to Inglemunder like when yeah, i know they had like him. it was like just kill him now and they never yeah do. i know i know yeah, laurie's so good in it though like everyone's been saying all my friends and my family and all you know all the fans are like you know they really like laurie and he i think he did a terrific job and you uh, said your dad has seen it three times is he is he a big fan of the show and yeah i spoke to him this morning he's just they're very supportive my family like they're they're always kind of rooting for me and watching all my stuff and yeah no dad dad called me this morning and he was like yeah i've seen it three times now and i was like really i was like what he was like yeah he said i think it's better the second time yeah. and he was like i said really and he was like he was like yeah i think it's better the second time he said i watched it the third time as well because i think it just gets better the more you watch it, it. he's a hundred percent right dude yeah i watched it for the I third time so as well and I, I think one thing with the film is it moves really fast yeah it yeah it does yeah, and, yeah, and it yeah. flows decently for the amount they try to pack into two hours I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I I picked up on some things in the third watch through that I did not pick up on the first two watch throughs that yeah. enhanced the movie a lot. Um, yeah. And I feel like my score for the movie just keeps going up like every time I watch it. And I think it, for me, the, the reason I thought it was better was because I, was, I wasn't as nervous watching it. You know, with you, that first time I watched it with you in New I York, I was so on edge. Were you afraid Colby wasn't going to like it? That. Well, yeah, partly I was like, yeah, well, that and then also just because I completely forgotten kind of what I did and what what was going to be in the film. So it was just scary to see what was my arc was going to be and if if it worked, you know, so it was it was terrifying. And the second time I watched it, the cast and crew screening, I was sitting I was sitting next to uh, Ryan and Finn. Uh, Harry Anton so we were it was, I felt really just chill with those guys because you know they're all really close mates and things and I lived with Ryan so Ryan, Ryan would like make a comment along the way and it was just I just felt really chill that, that, that second time that's got to be such a tough thing then like to watch it for the first time with a ton of fans compared yeah. to watching it like because like if it, it was good it was really good but like if it wasn't yeah. good it's sort of like <laughs> I'm surrounded by like everyone who loves this and <laughs> I know. I was. I say what the most terrifying thing for me was was actually having. So David Dawson came to the um, mm. cast and crew screening, and I was wow. so. Cause I really rate him as an actor. I think he's brilliant. And like, I was just terrified that he was going to be there watching it, and if he thought that I was going to be shit in it. What did he say then? He like, what, did he, he like, like set the, movie? the standard? You know, he said to my mum something like, "Oh, I'm proud of my grandson" or something, oh, and I was like, nice. oh, "I was like, oh, that's nice." That but yeah, awesome. getting the seal of approval from him was that was like a big that was a big deal because he's just oh. he's like you know up there with probably the best in the show I'd say so. Oh, yeah. oh I agree. I, I think yeah. um, whenever uh, one of you guys becomes king and or or something, it it, yeah. it seems like you guys step up your game. I mean, uh, obviously he was good. David Dawson was good in the first two seasons, but I think the third one was where he'd like. Mm. He was yeah. just on fire, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same with uh, Timothy Ennis. I thought season same four well. he was good, uh, but I thought five he like killed it. And then yeah, again, yeah, you did. were great, but I think you were just awesome in this movie. Yeah. It's a shame that there there isn't. I can't do anything else with it now. I re- I would have loved to kind of you know do another sort of season or a or a uh, spin off. That would be yeah. amazing. Let's go, they Netflix. Do it. Let's get they going. should do it. I, well, the show I mean, just there's 15 more years of his life. Too. I know. As, as I know. Game, right? so let's like, do it. Let's, let's start a petition. Let's get an Ethel Stan spin on. Let's get it going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it felt like you were your own 
king in this movie. It felt like you were doing your own yeah. thing. But mm-hmm. did you look at David Dawson or, or Timothy Innes to, to draw anything from? Yeah. Because um, yeah, there definitely. was every now and then you would see uh, Tim in season five. He'd like clasp his hands. I did that a couple of times. Yeah. But then that's probably me fitting the stereotype of being a king. And it's like, you know, it's also it's hard when you're when you're standing to try and know what to do with your hands. Yeah. I always I'm always like, what am I doing with my hands? And it's just <laughs> quite easy, especially when you've got these big costumes. In season five, my kind of like safe space was just to hold like the sword here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. you know, that was that was like, okay, that's fine. Cause I can just hold the sword and I don't have to think about what I'm doing with my hands. But in this, it was like my I had a I had a ring on this finger here. And I would just play with this ring a little bit. Right. I don't know. If I, I, don't, I haven't actually noticed if I do that a lot, but I, I definitely, when I was filming, I was just kind of playing with this ring all the time on my finger to, you know, try and keep my hands still. Yeah. It was, you know, the scene where Uhtred comes in and he, and he says, you know, uh, it, Ingleman has betrayed you and all of that. Yeah. You know, the, the, my favorite scene. Uh, the bit when he, I just remember the bit when he kind of grabs me and kind of chokes yeah. me. And I actually, I nearly fainted because I said to Alex, I was like, can you just go for it? I was like, can you, can you just strike? Just like, it looked just... like he had a, like a solid choke hold on. Yeah. I was like, can like you, you were just like go? losing color? Like, yeah, I know I lost color. I, I'm like yeah. pale on that, the bit afterwards because he literally, I think that's the take they use. I, my face started like tingling and I couldn't see straight. I started getting really dizzy and almost fainted. Like when I was doing all of that, like, to like all oh, these are lies and all of that and then banish him and things but yeah i remember i was like just go for it and he was like are you sure and i was like yes i was like yes let's yeah. do it and he got me in each other. i was like whoa <laughs> you, you deserved I it for what you did to that really. extra in season five uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i remember that yeah also in that scene i missed it the first time the second time i watched it you swing at him with your sword real quick with the sword that they had given you um, before he puts you in the in the chokehold. Oh, I do like, go getting mad. Like yeah, you like slash yeah, at him real quick. Yes, I did, and then he grabs the sword. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, maybe I was gonna kill him in that scene. Who knows? <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think he him. has it in him. Just maim him. I don't think so, dude. I mean, I think, yeah, showed he didn't. But... Plus, I mean, you know, it's Utrid, right? I mean, he's just gonna. You know, he's just gonna duck yeah. and dodge and get there, right? No, he's like all this. You know, the the scene at the end of season five when they were like, "Oh, maybe Ethel stands a better fighter than Utrid." Who knows? And then, and then I was like, "Nah, <laughs> a chance." Look at him; he's massive. He's trained by Utrid, but yeah, Utrid just got yeah, that I was experience. Like, you know, maybe that's his highlight reel. Like they they fought like ten times, and, and like, yeah. and they show the one where Ethel stand won. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It was, um, yeah. yeah, I was also like, Ethelstan really gonna like send the guards away and be alone in the room with Uhtred? Obviously, he trusted him from their their history, but like, like if, if yeah. Uhtred wanted to do something, like, this is not good. Those scenes, kind of, you know, when you when you have, you know, I think sometimes they're quite good. You know, when you just, it's a little line like just to so the guards like leave now and all of that. They kind of cement a bit more power, I think, in my mm-hmm. in the character and just like the way I kind of I didn't realize I was doing it but maybe the way i the way i thought it came across was like i just kind of said it very calmly like give mm-hmm. me that like it wasn't like you know excuse me hello <laughs> leave like oh yeah can right. you hear yeah it was just like take oh. this and go. It's, like and they just very do it matter of fact yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you had yeah. so many like critical moments with Alexander Draymond in this movie. I mean, what was it like? I mean, this is his last sort of hurrah as Uhtred, just being with him one on one. Yeah, it was amazing to do more stuff with Alex because I didn't, you know, there's obviously like bit scenes that are kind of more context and things in season five, and you know, it's all expositional a little bit. This I got to really, you know, go in with you know some some juicy scenes with Alex and. He's just so professional. He's such a professional guy and so on it at all times. Like he never drops, his, you know, never drops the ball. He's always so focused, so, um, you know, full of ideas that can yeah. make us better. And, you know, it was great having, getting to do those, those bigger scenes with him. Definitely. And like, you know, it, as well, it was great doing that scene with, um, with Elaine Cassidy. I thought Elaine did. Oh, a, she a, killed it. Amazing yeah, job. She's, yeah. she's a great actor. Yeah. 
It's 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 funny, isn't it? There's no relation between her and Sonia. But they just have the same surname. That yeah, wild. I thought she did it. She was she was great. I thought Jacob did a great job. They could also you know do a young Utrid series, a young. <laughs> I, I think yeah. they could go off, you know, if they wanted to, and have Ospert go off and and, yeah. and continue Utrid missions and things like that, and and do spinoffs. We we'd love to see. Uh, there's some really cool arcs from uh, Finnan's character in the books. Yeah. Um, I think they, they could just throw those in after uh, yeah. this movie too. And just be like, well, it's all happening the, now. Yeah. It's all the stuff in the book, you know, with um, Finnan and his brother from, from I Ireland. Some that, of my like, favorite parts of the book are those. Yeah. I thought that as well. I would have, yeah, I really want to see those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. that was a really yeah. cool story. I remember there's a, there's a bit in the book where I forgot which book it is. Maybe it's, um the one that's sort of at the beginning of season five segment of the book where Mark's like well Finn and Surrey is on a is on a horse at the front of the, the front of the shield wall and he's like looking for his brother and he goes yes. all the way along the front line on this horse and he's like oh. looking to try and kill his brother and I was like oh that'd be really cool. And the uh, moment he does it too yeah I when I read the book I saw it cinematically. Like I was like yeah. this would work so well cinematic because i think utrid describes it sort of from a distance yeah I yeah i think and, he does yeah yeah yeah. And i was like oh i can like see this happening I, yeah. that would have been i don't know, maybe maybe someday they can do it but um yeah obviously they can't do all the awesome stuff from the books in the show right. and the movie but you know but maybe just keep making movies you know just, I, just keep I, making I, stuff for I, us i would i would be down I, with I, that yeah like, i saw little... you guys did the um did the you know the the sort of review of the of the trailer or whatever and you, you were yeah. like saying you're like maybe this seven, maybe the six kings must die, and then five <laughs> like, kings must die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't all die in this. So, I mean, we've we've got to we've got to cross that off, right? We've yeah. got to go down. Five kings know, must die. Two kings must five, die. Yeah, one king must die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I mean, I'd love to do something again with it, and you know, kind of do the next part of the story. But I don't really know what the next part of the story is. Really, I think it's kind right. of I mean, that is the formation of england so i guess it's all kind of politics from there on um, and, but, and i yeah. think sometimes things that are awesome like like the last kingdom and seven kings must die sometimes they are just best left awesome yeah. um even though we're uh, greedy yeah, and we yeah. want more and and you know maybe some season but... six i think would have been uh, it could have worked to season six but... i think so at least maybe like a yes. mini season or something like yeah that i thought that i thought like the you know maybe six episodes rather than ten yeah um, i think that would have worked it would have um, worked. Yeah. I think but I would have gotten more connected with like Anlaf and some like the Wolf Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would have given me a chance to like really know them better. Um, yes. Definitely. Yeah. Because they did good. The actors, uh, they all did yeah. good, but it just didn't get it. And Constantine didn't get a ton of screen time in the movie. That would have been, yes. I wish he had a little Constantine bit more. Constantine spinoff for sure, man. Yes. We love Rod. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. He's like the nicest that, guy. He's I saw you like kid. fighting with his kids, right? Um, yeah oh yeah because they were all out there when we were filming so we would go and like babysit and things <laughs> practice but, your battle yeah. moves on them and like yeah they were uh, <laughs> such lovely kids and then ross's kid was out as well and like oh, it was cool everyone's sort of families were out it was it was different doing it for the for the because covid wasn't a, a problem yeah so, yeah it was, awesome. it was it was really sweet having them all out there yeah you know and speaking of families man it's obvious that you really became an integral part of the last kingdom family out there what was it like that last day on set you know obviously this i think you guys were looking at it like this is actually the end compared to where season yeah. five i think people thought it was the end but then it wasn't for some people um, yeah what was that last day like more so for mark and arnis and alex like i was obviously you know it was sad because i'd made some of my best friends from this and yeah. I didn't want to have to say, oh, you're right. See you later. And yeah. all of that. But you know, obviously we don't, we see each other all the time in London, but it is different. You know, when you've, when you've been working together and to not have that again, it's, it's it is sad, but I, I, I got a bit teary just watching Alex do his like kind of speech in front of all the crew and the cast at the end. And it was really dark. The final day was when I put this, the big uh, rock down. Um, oh, okay. And it was, it was such a lovely evening that like the sunset was, it was just beautiful. And, um, you know, he did this really touching speech about how, you know, amazing it's been. And I, I just got sad just watching Alex, but wow. yeah, I mean, they've, it's, they've sort of created such a, a huge, you know, show and, and, and they've 
it's yeah it's incredible what they've all done all the crew and the cast of the whole show really you know i've only been a part of it for the last year but it's been so just amazing to come into something you know when everyone's been so lovely to me and yeah it's mm. it, i'm gonna i am gonna miss it i think i i i, I do miss it now sometimes i look back at mm. photos of all of us having such a good time doing season five and things and and mm. you know the film and, and like some of the best you know days that i've i've had you know I've how had, many casts are that close knit and love each I know, other like I, you guys love yeah. each other it's it's yeah. it's cool man it's what awesome. are you guys watching at the moment what are you what are you watching at the moment you ted lasso oh i've been watching ted lasso do you yeah. like it how do you like yeah it? it's good I, I'm, on season, I'm on season three now i've just i have only watched the first episode but um i've just been watching beef have you watched beef um, it's on my list. I've heard it's oh, really man. good. Yeah, it's quite funny. It's quite it's it's like it? these two guys who you know, there's this guy and this girl who have a road rage, and it just gets really petty, and they start like doing shit to each other. It's it's funny. I really like it. I think yeah, it's good. Man. Yeah, it's good. Um, what like have you seen any really good movies lately? I know you said last time you like thrillers, and I'm always watching films all the time, and like I try and watch a film every day if I can. Like I'm I'm about to go and, um to Harry's like round the corner and we're gonna watch uh roadhouse <laughs> nice <laughs> very nice have you seen it before i've never seen it no we, uh, we, 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 we're oh, starting man. to do like a a movie night and we try because we live pretty close to each other so we're trying to just get a film in every week and we're we're calling it like macho movie night and it's basically all of the kind of all the films in the 80s and the 90s like those sort cool. of almost shit thrillers with like you know, which one like Commando and like yeah. Yeah, Hard Target, like Van Damme. They're Commando. amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's they're like amazing. Me and Harry are obsessed with those kinds of films. Like we watch them all the time. Have you seen but, like, John Wick? Oh, I did. Yeah, oh, I did. I really enjoyed it. I he, God, he, he the choreography is insane. Like I've watched it twice. <laughs> really? Seen, yeah, I've it's, seen it it's, twice. It's, fights are so cool. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. It, I was like the amount of bullets he must get through. I'm like, so many, so many, yeah, yeah. What did you I, think of um, the Oscar not, or choices this year? Did you watch any of those movies? I did, did yeah. I, I stayed or, up. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, you know what? My actually, I I really enjoyed the Fablemans, but maybe that's because yeah. maybe that's because I'm so into film. But I, I auditioned to play. Oh really? Uh, Spielberg, yeah, oh. and I look nothing like him, so I was like, this is never going to happen, but. Um, the guy who plays him, Gabriel LeBeau, I think he's brilliant. Yeah, I think he absolutely. was so. I I just thought it was such a cool film. Like you know, obviously yeah. all his films are great, but I thought yeah. that was great. I, I you know I stayed I stayed up and watched it, but I put a bet on every year, just like a little bet. Just I, I put a bet on Jamie Lee Curtis winning. Like I knew she'd win. Oh yeah, nice dude. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even and know that was her. Who who thinks she'd win for a character with uh, hot dog fingers? I know, um. I know. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. But I was watching. So I, I was on the sofa at like three in the morning watching it, and I was like, "Hold on, is that is that Alex? Is that Draymond?" And he was like there, just sitting sitting next to like Lady Gaga or something. Yeah, dude, that was nuts, dude. <laughs> to see him there. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, what about you, man? What do you have uh, coming up in the future? You have anything? Anything on the horizon? I mean, I'm, I'm. Um just lots of auditions at the moment i mean cool. yeah I mean, what's a dream something... project for you then what's what's something you would just love to be in you know what i watched the other night that i'm like yeah i, I just think whiplash is insane oh yeah, oh, yeah. I just, is... i've seen it i've seen it a million times and something like miles Te- i like miles teller i just think he's a brilliant actor and like his mm-hmm. career is been so interesting he's done his he's you know he's done the romance films and he's done like action films and kind of thrillers and he's kind of done all of it and i i really would like to do some similar kind of thing what was like the cast reactions because you had the fans you 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 watched the movie with the fans and and their reactions was was the cast when they were watching it was there similar reactions or or what was the difference between the two experiences it's very they were very very different experiences like you know when you watch it with the fans it's like you're, it was, you know, like I was saying, it's in the theatre, everyone's kind of interactive and screaming and going, yeah, and like laughing and, and Finland's jokes and things. And uh, the casting crew, I think, because we're all so involved with it, I think it's it's very more kind of like, let's sit down and watch it and then talk afterwards. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> totally. 
Oh, I meant to ask you one more thing about Ethelstan. When did you find out about uh, Ethelstan's um, sexual orientation? Probably about three weeks before we started filming. Oh, the yeah? film or the show? The, f uh, the, the film. Okay, it so was... you filmed season five sort of not knowing... We, I, had, I had no idea. I mean, gotcha. there had kind of been like other cast members, I think, were like, I think that's going to happen. And I was like, I don't know. Because I, I actually thought something they were going to do something with Steora and like go into that. Ah. That's what I thought. Me and Ruby thought that that might have happened. But because they kind of, you know, they had a little bit of a moment with the two of us in season five, yeah, but not, a, yeah. not you know, not a big moment. But they were like, oh, maybe that might happen. But I'm, I'm really glad that they went down this route. I think it makes yeah. the character much more interesting and there's so much oh more my I God, can yeah. do with it. And I think, you know, I think people are shocked about it, but I think it, that could have quite easily have been a possibility um, totally. back then. Well, never yeah. married, he never had kids. And like, I think that could have happened. And it was, you know, that when Nigel called me up and said, this is what we're going to do. And I was like, that, that sounds great. I sat, just sat, it just makes it a lot easier almost yeah. to, to to play off and like you've got more things going on and it's it's more of a complex character than you know just a young prince who's good at fighting. Right. Well, yeah, right. Bernard Cornwell, who who wrote the books that the show's based on, he, yeah, his research into it, um, he was uh, he found a lot of stuff that was indicating that's what people generally thought of. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and and he he's done so much research that he got to write the forward to the the Battle of Bramber or or, or however you pronounce Brunenberg. it. Yeah. Brunenberg. Brunenberg, sorry. Brunenberg, and yeah. I mean, so I mean, if he's saying it that it's it was mostly I I'm gonna believe it, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think it. I think it's they. It's a really smart move doing that. I think, you know, it's it's just just makes the story more interesting. I was gonna ask you guys what um now that the show's over what what um shows will you go into next we'll always do what we love we will always yeah. do what we love yeah. but we'd love to like latch on to something else like we latched on to last kingdom yeah yeah like, what I'm do you think it will be you're not sure yet no and but we have uh through this we have covered other things that we've just been interested yeah. in and outlander we've gotten uh into that and mm -hmm. the, yeah. the fans have interacted with us and we've met cast members um it's just that... oh, yeah, of course in salem yeah right, mm -hmm. right when Outlander was coming out, season five of Last Kingdom came out. So we were like, this is what wow. we, we like more and yeah. and yeah. we're we do more with. So we prioritize that. So I think I think we'll dip back into that um yeah. too. Um and then yeah, I mean just kind of go from there. Uh yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just whatever we like and and connect yeah. on and because I think that's why we are successful at this is just because yeah. we know it and love it. I mean, the way we the Last Kingdom was our favorite show way before we had a podcast, you know, and mm. it would be awesome to find another show that can like sort of even even if I, I can imagine Last Kingdom always being our favorite, but like yeah, if we can find another show that we love as much. What um, about like House of the Dragon? So, so yeah, we cover House of the Dragon. We loved House of the Dragon, um, and obviously we, you and Mitchell was awesome. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant. Dude. Yeah, he's so good. He's so and, good. Um, and Fia Seven was in it too. Oh, such a cool arc and creepy, yeah, and was, I didn't know he could do that with his acting and be so freaking. I went for that part. <laughs> Did yeah. you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Oh, I did. I think a lot of people went for that part, and it was really cool. It was really cool too. Incredible that he got it. Yeah, um, he he kept it really quiet because we all auditioned for that when we were doing season five. Uh, and, like me and like there's a few others who went for it, and uh, we were all like, "Oh, this Game of Thrones thing's quite cool, isn't it?" And he was like, yeah, yeah. And then, and, then like, and then just didn't say anything to us that he'd got the part. And I was like, oh my God, you ain't got the part. I just uh, realized uh, what they are making that we are probably going to dive deep into. Bernard Cornwall has a King Arthur series. Oh, yeah. oh of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Warrior King or something. Yeah, With well, the Winter, the, the Winter King. King. The Winter King. The Winter King, that's it, yeah. And it's a trilogy, and we both read the books, and it's got to be my favorite adaptation of King Arthur in the oh, books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So The Winter King, that would be cool. That's gonna be cool, and yeah, they're gonna need a lot of money to make it anywhere near what the book is, because it's like I think it, I think, it has, and, I think there's like, big, big money on that from well, what that's it looks. awesome. I, so I I'd like to dive into that next. Yeah, yeah. I, I think definitely. it's still the same as he writes it like he did the Last Kingdom. It's not fantasy. It's him, yeah. 
there's there's things you're yes. like, well, this could be, or it's just a bunch of people doing a ritual and there's coincidence that happens, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah that's that that's a good question. I think that's what we'll do next. Took you to your first baseball game, Harry, know, right? Was well, it your no, first I one? Loved it. Uh, it was. That was the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then awesome. yeah, it was great. I loved it. That's such a such a cool one, you know, to be the first the first one. Fenway Park, like the oldest, one of the oldest stadiums in all of baseball, man. That's yeah. Exactly. And you know the guys who own Fenway, or uh, sorry, who own the Red Sox are at least, I think, majority owners of Liverpool soccer team. Or the football. I, team? No, I did know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, I hate yeah. Liverpool because I'm a Yankee fan. But <laughs> um, I remember when we, everyone, you, we were in this sort of like we with all the the Boston fans, weren't we? All yeah, the Red yes. Sox fans, yes. and you were like, you were like, oh god. You guys are all like fuck the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. I was in nervous, my in my man. face. That was like, oh my god. You're like, oh yeah. Like you're all like, my yeah, favorite you're actors like, yeah, just... with the Yankees cap on. Yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. You can't you can't hide it. Yeah. Can't hide it. I, I don't check know if it you out. Go to... He gave me the vest to put. I was like, I I don't want to like get stabbed <laughs> at the urinal or something, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, thank you for thank you for coming on again. Yes. Dude. Yeah, um, no, thank you so much. Um, is there anything you want to just really quickly say to the fans here before we sign off? I mean, yeah, just a huge thank you for just being there from the beginning and just being such huge supporters of all that we've done. And yeah, and you know, the reason it is the show it is now is because of you guys. So, so yeah, lots of love to all of you. And yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, again, this is Harry Gilbert. You killed it in Seven Kings Must Die. Go watch it again because it gets better every time you watch. It gets better. Yeah. It gets better. <laughs> um, but otherwise, please like, follow, subscribe to all our social media platforms. Otherwise, Destiny is All in. Destiny Screen is Chronicles all, yeah. And Harry Gilbert.